Hey guys, this is the Wiggle Man, and welcome back to Loot Hoarder. Today we're going to be painting the Power Armored Marine. This is from Loot Studios War for Humanity Bundle. So getting right into it, we start off with a grey primed model. I'm going to be airbrushing on the black base coat all over the model. However, you can also brush this on. This is the only time during this project that we're going to be using an airbrush. For those of you who are returning to the channel as well, you might have noticed I've got a new camera in the meantime. I've not uploaded for a while, and that was because I felt like the quality of my videos wasn't that great. Now I've got this new camera, I'm dead happy with it. Once our black base coat has dried to a nice matte finish, we then move on to dry brushing. Originally this project was an attempt for me to do black armour, however you'll see at the end the results that we got was completely different to what I'd originally planned, but I was still dead chuffed with the final product. So the first highlight that we're laying down now with the dry brush is a very very dark midnight blue. This is just to bring some kind of highlight to the model without being too extreme. The second colour that we use during the dry brushing process is uh, what I could only call an equivalent to the fang. Very medium, just a blue blue, not quite as uh, intense as an ultramarine blue. Uh, I'd say take that and darken it down just a little bit. Don't forget to like or subscribe if you'd like to see more of this kind of content. The next step is the dreaded edge highlighting. So I'm terrible for edge highlighting. I try to avoid it wherever possible. That's why I mainly paint organic looking models. And I wanted to challenge myself. And I suggest you should too, if you're afraid of edge highlighting. The big takeaway that I learned whilst doing this uh, was whenever you're edge highlighting, add just a single drop of um, uh, glaze medium into your mix and it flows off the brush so much easier it's honestly changed the way I look at edge highlighting moving forward and now I feel a lot more confident doing it for the next stage you can see I've already started it but we're going to be base coating all of the metallic areas of the model using a dark kind of chainmail slash lead belcher color we just give it all one or two coats give it a nice solid metallic look with the metallic base coat completed i then went on and base coated a couple of areas say the tubing around where the flight suit's showing uh the kind of pattern that's on the uh the, the thighs i base coated that all black Following that, I then went over all the black areas and the metallic areas with the black wash, either null oil or as I'm using here, Vallejo black wash. Once the wash is fully dried, we then take our original metallic colour that we used to base coat the model and start to highlight it. The key to this next stage is just make sure that we're avoiding area, any areas where there's recess. So for example, right in the corners of the armor, underneath the cannon, things like that, where the light's not really gonna hit it too much. Doing this helps bring back a bit of a sheen to the metallic that we lost during the initial washing process. Once we've done that, we take an even lighter shade of the metallic paint and we do the exact same again this time only picking out the absolute tippy top details just to really bring them out a little bit more with the body complete you might notice he's not got a head i left the head as a sub assembly for this uh, project and i base coated the exact same way that i did the body that we've done the body uh, and now we're going to move on to paint the visor so while painting the visor i originally wanted to go for kind of a red glow of the visor that didn't work. However, what I ended up with, I preferred. And once again, this is one of those happy accidents that we get as, as model painters. And um, it, it goes to show that trying something, it might not necessarily get you the results that you're initially going for. For example, this was meant to be black armor. I've been told it looks like gypsy danger, which is also fine. Um, so what we did was we started out with kind of a, 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 a gold brown color. And all of the colors that I used whilst painted the visor, I also mixed with a good amount of uh, glaze medium. After the initial coat, I thought that there was a bit too stark of a difference between the gold brown and the black on the visor. So I took a burnt amber color, once again mixed with a little bit of glaze medium, and began to paint the line in between the brown and the black on the visor. 
basically with each step of shade of colour that we go up in, as we get lower on the visor, we want to be following the approximate shape of where we want the shadows to be on the visor. Am I saying visor too much? Visor. So our next colour that we're going to use would be the equivalent of a corn red. Uh, this is a, a deeper red, uh, still got quite a lot of vibrance to it. As you can see, I was pretty unhappy with that initial layer of a gold brown, so I've gone back over it with the red. So for the next couple of steps, we move, we do exactly the same, just covering a smaller and smaller area of the visor. Uh, we go to a much brighter red, uh, then we go to a kind of a reddy orange. Finally, we go up to a yellow. And it was at this point that I noticed the happy accident. It no longer looked like a red glowing visor, but you know what? It looks like the 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 giant battle suit is looking out over a burning battlefield, which is equally just as cool. So for the last bit of work on the visor, Then to finish off the helmet, I took my uh, cool off white and edge highlighted it once more, going through the same steps that I did when I edge highlighted the body, and also added in some metallic paints around the visor just to break things up a bit. Coming up to the end, off camera I added some transfers onto the model just to give a bit more uh, punch and interest onto the, onto the model itself. And uh, I'd just like to say uh, thank you for joining me. If you enjoyed the content, please like, subscribe, share it, ring the bell, do whatever you want to do, dislike it. Um, but please leave me some feedback. I'd love to hear it.